We finally made it to spring, supposedly, and I'm back with another video for my March stats 2024. We're now back into the better months for solar generation, and although it started slowly, March ended with a bang. Today I'll be looking at more detail on how my system performed throughout March for my east-west solar array, including generation, export, and much more, including how my payback's doing after 15 months of having the system installed. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar and on this channel you can follow my journey all things electric vehicles, solar panels, energy tariffs, money saving and much more. Please hit the like button if you find this video useful and also subscribe to the channel to follow me on this journey. Despite the rainy weather we've had throughout the winter, we did start to see a change throughout March as we got to the longer days and also had some sunny spells towards the end of the month. And that really helped to increase the solar generation towards the end of the month because at one point during the middle of the month it did look like it was going to be another bad month overall and would have been way down on the generation we had last March. Let's get into the stats and first let's start by looking at the generation for the month. So I think this is a really good chart and it shows a good representation of the difference between a grey day and a really sunny day during March that you can have. So we had a minimum generation day of just 1.14 kilowatt hours. So still really low on a dark grey day in March. However, a maximum generation day of 26.02 kilowatt hours, which is great for my system in March. The other big feature of this chart is the upward trend of generation towards the end of the month. As we enter further into springtime and have longer days, 328 kilowatt hours was the generation total for the month and 64 kilowatt hours of that went back into the home. Just eight kilowatt hours went into charging the battery and the vast majority was exported back to the grid. And as you'll see, most of the bars on this chart are coloured red. And that's because I'm continuing to charge my battery up to full 100% overnight using the cheap 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour nighttime rate on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. And then once the sun comes up, I'm exporting back to the grid with Octopus's fixed outgoing tariff, which pays me 15 pence per kilowatt hour for everything that I export back to the grid. And Octopus are doing a really great job with these kind of tariffs, so if you would like to join them, it would be great if you could use my referral code that's on screen at the moment. If you use this, you get £50 added to your account when you join, and I also get £50 as well, which helps to support the channel. So thank you to everyone that's used that link so far. If you'd like more information on my system itself, um, recently I did a video where I reviewed how my system was performing after one year. So check that out here if you're interested in that. And if we move on to look at how these figures compare to last year, ever so slightly down on March 2023 generation in the end at around about 95%, which didn't look possible around halfway through the month, but the excellent generation over the second half of the month rescued this a little bit and it actually ended up really close to the generation for last year. And if we look at the worst, best and average generation, so you can see my 2023 figures in there in orange yellow and green and i've overlaid the 2024 figures in red blue and purple so as you can see the best day and the average generation is roughly the same as last year slightly down uh, but the big one is the poor days generation that we had during one day in march of 1.14 kilowatt hours so that really stands out on that chart there but generally following the same trajectory as last year just slightly lower and if we look at the best days generation for the month, that was towards the end of the month on the 30th of March, where we generated 26.02 kilowatt hours. Maximum generation was 4.2 kilowatts throughout the day. And as you can see, pretty nice curve there with just a few moments of cloud cover where we get those dips in the generation chart. And because I'm charging my battery on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff overnight, you can see that it didn't actually drop below 100% up until around about eight o'clock during the night time when the sun went back down and everything mostly that day was exported straight back to the grid to help the grid and the sun started to generate some electricity on the panels uh, before six o'clock around about half five and generated something up till around about 7 p.m on the night so a really great day and exactly what we wanted to see in march if we look at the worst day for generation on the 10th of march we generated just 1.14 kilowatt hours Again, you can see the battery charging up until it's full and then staying full until around about 6 o'clock on the 10th of March 
We then add a little bit of generation from kind of six, seven onwards, and we stop generating around about six o'clock, but maximum generation there of just over 320 watts. So battery going down still, plenty more than enough during the battery from this time of the month onwards. So only dropping down just below 70%. The grid import for March, so this is everything that I'm importing into my battery mostly or into my home and that was 114.19 kilowatt hours. So this doesn't include EV charging uh, which I'll show in the next chart. But as you can see 36 of that was to power the home during the night and also 77 kilowatt hours was filling my battery up from the grid. And if we move on to look at home consumption, the total for the month was around about comparable to our usual so 173.68 kilowatt hours for the month of March and this was split pretty comparably between the solar generating to the home and the battery power in the home so 64 kilowatt hours from the solar 36 coming from the grid and 72 from the battery to power the home and if we move on to include EV consumption I was actually away a couple of times during March, so I had four days away in the middle of March and then a couple of days towards the end, so much less EV usage and also coinciding with the temperatures warming up as well, which tends to improve the efficiency on my EV battery, so only 215 kilowatt hours used this month. And you can see there was only five charges, those big red spikes on the graph there. So a really cheap month for powering my EV. And for grid export, Again, this is now going up with the longer days. 262.33 kilowatt hours exported. 255.8 of that went from the solar straight back to the grid. And 6.53 kilowatt hours went back to the grid from the battery. So you can see those three small blue spikes there. Those were seven sessions days on the 1st, the 2nd and the 14th of March. So that made us a little bit extra, not much this month. Uh, they weren't paying very much and I think most of the slots were only 30 minutes long anyway but still a nice little bonus just to top up my bill and again you can really see the export start to increase during that last week or so throughout the last month of March and if we move on to look at payback we're into month 15 now since I had the system installed the home consumption was 173.68 as I discussed earlier and the import from the grid was 114 0.2 kilowatts as I say mostly to top the battery up and that equates to I had a really low average rate I think it was 7.8 pence this month so that equates to £8.91 and pence to power the home and charge my battery up. Generation 328 and the export 262 so the export at 15 pence per kilowatt hour for everything that I export back to the grid equates to £39.35 and pence in earnings and then as usual I've included the other tariffs in there so the cost if I didn't have solar and I was on the flexible tariff would have been £47.76. The cost without solar but if I was on Intelligent Octopus Go the cost to me would have been £32.57 and the cost without solar on the tracker tariff it would have been £29.53. And overall as you can see there hopefully see uh, the cost with solar was minus £30.44 for the month. So if we add that to the saving sessions earnings of £5.06, then that equates to a saving for this month. You can really start to see this ramping up again now for the summer months. Saving of £83.26. So that was great. But again, you can see quite significant savings. If I didn't have solar and I was on the Intelligent Octopus Core tariff, that would have saved me £63.01 and on the tracker tariff would have saved me £59.97. So, so if we add that to the cumulative savings, that takes us to £1,589. Since we had the system installed and a remaining payback, remember if you've watched my earlier videos, my system cost just under £11,000. So that takes us to a remaining payback of £9,390.11. And if we include the car usage, which I tend to tag on the bottom, which... I don't attribute the savings directly to the solar, uh, but I like to include these versus my old diesel car just to see how we're getting on. So as I mentioned, 215 kilowatt hours used throughout March, and that cost £16.77 to power the car. So fantastic again, very low usage, very cheap to run my electric vehicle. 
the diesel cost is creeping up again so my garage that I would usually fill up at was about 161 on average so that would have cost me about 169 pounds to fill up and do the same miles in my old diesel car so that gives us an overall saving on fuel of 152 pounds and 28 pence and if we add that on to the monthly savings that's 235 pounds so if we look at the overall march 2024 bill starting to really come down now so we have a standard charge of 15 pound and six pence we have an electricity charge for 329 kilowatt hours of 25 pound and 68 pence export equates to minus 39 pound and 35 pence paid back to us saving session is five pound and six pence paid back to us and the standing charge for gas eight pound and 43 pence and we used 1314 kilowatt hours throughout March to heat our hot water, heat the home, and that equated to £50.85. and pence. So it's starting to come down now as the warmer weather appears and hopefully that continues to a point where we can switch off the gas for the summer months. And that gives us a grand total for heating our home, heating the hot water, powering my electric vehicle, powering my home and charging my battery of £55.61. So really happy with that in March. And hopefully that continues to get better as the year goes on. So I think that about sums it up for this month. Hopefully we have less rain going forward and more sunshine as the longer days start to take hold. And as we move through the spring and summer months. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to follow me and my content. I've got much more coming up related to solar panels, electric vehicles, energy tariffs and much more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.